Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Do you think your MacBook's battery is draining too fast? Let me show you how to figure out if it really is and how to make it last longer. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 2,000 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about it. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now, I often see comments online from people that have MacBooks and think that the battery just drains too fast. Well, there's usually a good reason for this. You see, battery drain depends on what you're doing with your MacBook. It's just like a car. It's not going to use much fuel if it's parked, but it will if you're driving it on the highway. On the Mac, if you're doing more, it's going to use more power. But it's not as simple as just thinking about which apps you're using. It's how you're using those apps as well. For instance, you could be using a graphics app to edit a small icon or a huge, high-resolution, multi-layered magazine cover. A spreadsheet could be a few hundred rows or tens of thousands of rows with lots of calculations. And when editing a video, you could just be combining two clips or you could be creating a multi-layered video with titles, backgrounds, special effects, and so on. And this is also true if all you're doing is just browsing the web. You could be just looking at a static text page that's hardly using any energy. Or you could be looking at a page with hundreds of different elements that are calling back to the server, animating things, playing streaming video, and so on. A web page could be using almost no energy or a lot of it. Now instead of just having a feeling that your battery is draining fast, you can actually check to see exactly how fast it drains by just going into System Settings. And then if you go down to Battery, make sure you select Last 24 Hours Here and you're going to see a chart of where your battery was at during that time. So you can see here it was being charged up to here. It was at 100% for a while and then it drained it down over a period of time, remained steady overnight. It drained down a little bit more, steady again, and drained down. So you can get a really good idea of how long it's actually taking your battery to drain. A quick way to check to see what's using the most battery is to look at the battery icon here in the menu bar. If you don't see the battery icon there, you could always add it by going to System Settings and then going to Control Center and then here you'll find Battery and select Show in Menu Bar. If you click this, it'll show using significant energy and will show you the apps that are using a lot of energy right now. So if you notice your battery is draining a lot right now, these are probably the culprits here. But there's a problem with this. This is very much in the moment. So for instance, if you notice that your battery has drained a lot in the last few hours and you look here, you may see that nothing is using a lot of energy. And that's because the battery drain has taken place over the last couple hours but not necessarily over the last 5 or 10 minutes. So this only works to see what's happening right now. So you can see now just a short time later if I check battery again, it shows me no apps are using significant energy even though I know some were using significant energy just a short time ago. So this isn't always very useful in diagnosing battery drain. To find out what's been happening over a longer period of time, you're going to want to use an app that's on your Mac called Activity Monitor. I'm going to launch it here using Launchpad and I'm just going to search for Activity Monitor here and run it. And by default, Activity Monitor is going to show you all of the different apps and processes running on your Mac and how much CPU they're using. But that's not what you're interested in. You want to know how much energy they're using. And you can see here there's a tab at the top for Energy. So switch to that and then you'll see all of the apps and processes running and you'll see a few columns that will help. One is the Energy Impact and this tells you how much energy it's using right now. If I click on that to sort, there's Google Chrome, there's Safari, there's iMovie. And these are using the most energy right now. But this next column here shows you the energy use over the last 12 hours. So this gives you a clearer picture of what has been recently using a lot of energy even if you're not actually even running the app at the moment. And this will show you results that make more sense. So for instance here I could see in the last 12 hours Safari, Google Chrome, the Photos app, and iMovie have been using a lot of power. But it's very important to remember to weigh that against your actual use. For instance, if an app is using a lot of power but that's actually what you've been doing mostly with your MacBook, then it makes sense. So if you've been editing a lot in Final Cut Pro over the last few hours and Final Cut Pro has been using the most power, well that fits. That's what's supposed to happen. 
But if you see an app there that you've barely been using or it's just running in the background, you're not actually actively using it, and that's using a lot of power, well then that's suspect. You may want to quit that app or make sure you don't use it while you're connected to battery if you want your battery to last longer. But it's not always about the app itself because apps can be doing several different things. For instance, with Safari here, notice I can expand this and it will show me the parts of Safari and how much power they're using. Notice that some of these actually show websites. So this is a way to figure out which tabs in Safari are using a lot of power. You can see the one using the most power right now, for instance, is a tab with Yahoo. So these, of course, have tons of different elements, lots of things going on on them, so it makes sense. If I go down further, I can see other sites here that are not using nearly as much. And these how I've opened tabs right now, but they're barely using any power. Because when you're thinking about which apps are using a lot of energy, it's important to think about what the apps are doing. And in the case of a browser, it's actually an environment running many different apps, each one of those being a different web page. So here I've got five tabs open. And just because Safari is using a lot of power doesn't mean all five of these tabs are. Only a few of them might be. Now Safari is nice enough to report energy use per tab like that. But non-Apple apps may not do that. For instance, Google Chrome certainly has different processes running here. But you can't really tell which Google Chrome tab is using the most energy. You can make some good guesses though. You can look at what's on a page and figure out that a page has a lot of stuff going on and that's probably using a lot of energy as opposed to a page that is mostly text. And of course it's pretty well known that Google Chrome as a browser uses a lot more energy than say Safari. But Chrome does actually have a tool in it to let you know which tabs are using the most energy. You can get to it by clicking on the three dots button here and then going to more tools. Then go not to performance but to task manager. And in task manager here you'll see different tabs like this and you'll see how much CPU the tab is using. So it's not a perfect measurement of energy but it might give you a good idea. Of course the way to fix this is to close tabs that you're not using. I often see people that are afraid to close tabs because they think they might go back to that page later. But it's very easy to go back to a web page after you've closed the tab. If it's just the main page of a website, just open a new tab and go there. If it's a specific page there, just bookmark it and jump right back to it when you need it. Don't be afraid to close tabs. Or if you are afraid of closing tabs, don't complain that your battery is draining fast because this is the reason why. And remember, it's perfectly okay to keep your MacBook plugged in while you're using it. If power is available, why not? It will mean fewer battery cycles so it will increase your battery's longevity. Plus your Mac will actually run faster if it has access to power rather than running off the battery. This will be a signal to use the high powered CPU cores rather than the efficiency ones. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.